Welcome back to the Texas Private School Podcast. I am your host of just one of me today, uh, Walker Lai here. Wes Tollison is studying for finance at SMU, like always, uh, hard at work, but I miss him very much. I'm here with a good old friend of mine, Brandon Brunson of TexasHighSchoolBaseball.com. Uh, the the man, the myth, the legend knows everything about Texas private school baseball. I love him very much. This is a what probably third, fourth times coming on now. Oh, I think so. Uh, two two or three years. I've done a couple of episodes last year, maybe. Yeah, always a pleasure to be with y'all. Awesome, and I'm here also with our uh, baseball analyst for TXPS Baseball, uh, Katie Pfeffer. Uh, she is also uh, an Eagle from Southwest Christian, but she is here our baseball girl this year and uh she's been doing awesome work so say say hello katie uh hi guys uh thank you so much for the little intro um i'm very excited uh just to get to talk baseball today i love baseball so much and following it um so i'm excited to get to talk with you brandon um since you're such an expert in uh texas high school baseball well thank you it's a pleasure always a pleasure and i'll do anything to help you guys out anytime yeah, so I didn't know I was going to have two Southwest Christian Eagles, though. I mean, you know, what's two is always better than one, and you know, when you come in from a great school like SES, it just it just is better. You know what I mean? So, um, to start us out, though, I'll let Kitty continue it out. But the to start us out, kind of talk about the landscape of Texas private school baseball right now. I know we're mid season, kind of wrapping up district play at the moment. What is kind of the landscape going on right now? What teams have kind of impressed you at the moment? Yeah, I, man. I think you have to start off with Prestonwood Christian in Division One. They're twenty zero uh, and one. Right. The one the one uh, tie is to Midland Christian. Oddly enough, in a in a tournament game early in the season, and you know how those tournament games are. Probably ended early. There's no telling how that would have gone if it was an actual game and they had played uh, all the way through. But uh, Preston was looking against St. Pius down in Houston. Uh, is really rolling down there in District 2, and they're looking really strong. Um, great record. That's a tough district. Uh, but as you know, in Division 1, everybody makes the playoffs. So oh, it's yeah. all about seeding uh, during this part of the year because everybody's in the tournament. So uh, you got to watch out for them. Um, I've been impressed also with Pasadena First Baptist. Oh, down in Houston? Area. Yep, Division Four school, seventeen and two. They were in the state tournament last year. Uh, my prediction was that they would be back to the state tournament. I'm sticking with it. They are rolling through that district, and uh, they play some really good competition. So they're going to be one to watch out for for sure uh, on the road to Arlington. Um, Brook Hill. I, I've been hearing really good things about Brook Hill. So mm-hmm. I was curious. They didn't have a great year last year. Had a coaching change, but the coach that came in is a legend, Don English, who was at TCA. Oh, wow. Uh, early in the season, I kept getting reports from multiple. They said, look out for Brook Hillman. They look really good. Multiple coaches telling me that, that through the tournament season, and uh, it's proved to be true. They're in a district with McKinney Christian, mm-hmm. uh, who made the state tournament. Uh, McKinney's record's not great right now. They're sub 500, like 7 and 12. Oh, wow. But don't let that fool you. Uh, they will probably find their way back to Arlington as well. Uh, early season, some some things just not going well for them, and they play some good competition, but uh, I expect them to be there as well. Nice. Yeah, well, it sounds like there's really like a lot of um, talent and competition uh, within TAPS and within private school, Texas baseball in general. And I love just being able to like follow that um, in the rankings that you put out each week. Um, Just as a fan, I love uh, being able to look at this so I can kind of um, understand a scope of all of Texas baseball and not just like what's directly around me. Um, But I have a question kind of uh, going deeper into those rankings. Uh, If you had to kind of divide baseball up into its three main categories uh, between like pitching, batting, and then defense, I want to know what schools you would kind of rank at the top of each of those categories overall, and maybe what are a few players that stand out from those schools? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I I don't really do much tracking of like fielding percentage. We've had some calls for that. We published at the end of the year uh, a top 75 private school stats. So we get the top 75 players in multiple categories. We do home runs, strikeouts, doubles, triples, 
uh, stolen bases. We've never done fielding percentage. Uh, and mm. we've had people ask us about that. So I think it's a good question, Katie. It's something that we probably ought to take a look at as an organization. Uh, so I have a harder time answering that one. I, I, I go back to to one that I've already talked about, Preston Wood Christian. That is such a potent lineup. Uh, and then when you look at District 1 in Division 2, uh, Liberty Christian, I, I've, I've watched those guys. I've gotten to see them play. They came out to Midland. I watched them play at home in Argyle early in the season. And I look at that lineup and I go, man, there's just not many holes in that lineup uh, offensively. They can they can really get after you. Uh, and then and then they're pretty good on the mound too. So um, I'm, I'm interested to see in the second half of the season, speaking of uh, Southwest Christian, Rusty Beam is one of my favorite people in the world. I love Coach Beam, good friend of mine. Um, uh, Jackson Burns has not been pitching, but he should be ready for the back half of district, I think. And I think that's going to make such an impact in District 1 for the second half of the race. Uh, it's going to just really change things as, as everybody moves back through. Um and so those are the ones that that that, uh, that I think about off the top of my head as far as good offensive and and great pitching teams. Yeah, well, it it seems like uh, there's just uh, a lot of talent, and you mentioned a few players uh, like Jackson Burns. But are there any other players that are top prospects that you want to highlight? Oh, for sure. Uh, so uh, Liberty's got a couple of them. Uh, Hogan Nelson was a great football player too. You know this? Uh, yeah, shout out Hogan, man. <laughs> so Hogan Nelson, the junior, he's headed to Dallas Baptist, but he, he's just a junior this year, right? So he's an underclassman. He got another year. Brady Janusek, who can be all state in any sport, do uh, as a dog, play or academic, whatever. He's he's uh, headed to Oklahoma. Uh, Preston Wood has Xavier Mitchell, a junior, headed to Texas. Yeah, he's the top prospect. Uh, our cover guy this year. So. Um, you may know, may or may or may not know this, Katie. We we ceased printing a magazine a couple of years ago and just went totally online. But we still have a cover picture. And one of our cover guys was Kason Evans. Oh, from yeah. Yeah. St. Pius down in Houston. Uh he is uh committed to LSU. And uh there is a lot of buzz around him, or at least there was early on this year, about being drafted. Uh, early on in in the major league draft, so there's a potential uh, that uh, that we've got a draft pick uh, in the Texas private school ranks, and and he's the one. So um, then there was a late one that I, that I just caught right before the season started, and it caught the rest of our group off guard too. Uh, it's a young man named Omar Serna who hmm. played uh, in the public schools. He's a six A catcher, and he transferred to Lutheran South just before baseball started. And so when I text my friend uh, and the founder of the magazine, the 6A guy, said, do you know anything about Omar Serna? And he said, Omar Serna, he's the best catcher in the nation. And he and he is. He is the number one catching prospect in America. Wow. Playing at Lutheran South. So that was, that was a massive uh, sea change. And so Lutheran South is already loaded anyway. They've got... Um, they've always been like that too. They've always been like that. So I, in fact, I was watching them just before we, uh, logged on to record this episode. They're playing right. St. Thomas right now. Oh, uh, they got Victor Coronado. They've got a young man uh, named Marcus Cantu. Yeah. Cantu going to UT. Victor Coronado is going to UT. Uh, Omar Serna I, is committed to LSU. Mm. So, I mean, my goodness, you look at Lutheran South and think, there's no holes in that lineup either. Yeah. Uh, and Roland Aguillon on the mound is a great pitcher. They're going to be really hard to beat. So uh, those are some of them. Uh, I also really like Matthew Bouton out of Colleyville Covenant. Mm. Uh, dad's the coach there. Matt Matthew is going to go to Texas A&M. He's he just did, a yeah. dude. Uh, and he's a good basketball player. And I, 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 does he play? I don't know if he plays football, uh, Walker, or not. I don't think so, but I know speaking back to Cantu over there at Lutheran South, he was okay. he started at quarterback his freshman year, and then this past season he dropped and he's just going straight baseball, which is it's funny, but like everyone was kind of looking at him and be like, Oh, they gotta they gotta do it over there. But yeah, Texas yep. Army, you probably want to keep that arm just for baseball, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
And then there's a there's another couple that 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 I think about. Lash Henderson is at Prestonwood. He's a freshman, mm. and he is the number one prospect in Texas. Wow, class of 2027, ranked number five nationally in the 2027 class as a in that in that freshman class. Right, he's at Prestonwood, and then uh, Trent Valade, uh, Coach James Valade's son, Trent Valade, is a sophomore, and he's been lights out on the mound this year in addition to being among the home run leaders. So those are some of the names that, that, uh, that, that everybody ought to, ought to be watching. What what do you think uh, about some of these teams, right? You have the Preston Woods, you have the Lutheran Souths. What kind of drives these talent? Like, cause Preston Woods always been a good team, but it looks like this team is unstoppable, right? This year kind of talk about some of the coaching staffs, I guess, over there of kind of bring all this talent and have, build a program at these type of schools. Yeah. Preston Wood's a monster. Um, and you've got, you've got a really good coach and he's a really good man, James Delayed, and he's got a background at the college level and at the professional level. So when kids see Preston Wood and they say, and they see a coach Delayed, they know I can go there. I'm going to be coached. Well, it's a good program. I'll have an opportunity to play for a state championship. And there's so much talent in the DFW area. Uh, that if you're not getting reps at a 6A school and you can go to a Prestonwood or a Liberty or a Southwest Christian, there's plenty of places to go play and get to reps. Yeah. And those are the kind of schools that are going to play for a state championship. L- Liberty is another great example. Billy Jordan is just one of the absolute best coaches in the business. Nice guy. Good friend of mine. Uh, now, Liberty's got it going when you when you bring Jason Witten in as your football coach, uh, it's going to attract kids and it's going to yeah. raise the level of every program, and it's helped at Liberty. Uh, Liberty's also, uh, you know, they got the benefit. There was a young man in Midland at Midland Christian named Nick Ellis, who would have been their number one pitcher at Midland, moved to Argyle and and went to school at Liberty. Wow! So when you've got Hogan Nelson and then you've got uh, Brady Janusek, who can throw a little bit, and then Nick Ellis is their number one. Alex Cadell on the mound. They pitch really well, too, right? And then they have a young man. Another name to know is Drake Hop. So Drake is a outstanding hitter. His dad was his dad is Brad Hop, uh, who played for the Colorado Rockies. Mm. So when you get especially it looks especially in the DFW area, but I'm seeing it everywhere, Houston and some other places. You get some ex major leaguers who can volunteer and be on your staff. It's outstanding. John Lackey, who pitched for the Angels, yeah. is a pitching coach uh, in Texas private school baseball. Do you so, do you, you know his dad? Uh, John Lackey's dad, because yeah, he pitched for the Cardinals, right? Yeah, he John pitched Lackey. for the Angels and the Cardinals. Lackey did, yes. His dad coached at SES for a fat minute. Yeah, yeah, way before so, your time, but yeah. <laughs> when you get that kind of, t- you know, last year, maybe it was two years ago, Billy Jordan talked to me and he said, Chris Carpenter, who pitched mm. for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals and won a Cy Young, came to him and said, I'd like to work with your pitchers. And Billy's like, OK, a Cy Young award winning pitcher wants to help with my pitching staff. Of course you can help. Right. So that attracts talent and that just builds on itself. And that's why you see those schools doing so well. And they're repeating uh, repeat uh, trips to the state tournament or at least deep into the playoffs. Wow. Yeah, that's so cool to hear. I had no clue about um, one person potentially going to the draft. And it's always very cool to hear about all the different uh, D1 com- commits. So it sounds like there really is a lot of talent within uh, private, private school Texas baseball. Um So I have a question, since you cover both private schools and public schools, what do you think kind of the main difference in talent and competition is between uh, private and public schools? Yeah, so I don't really do much public school stuff. Um, With with the website and the magazine, we've got uh, people who take care of each section of that. Now, I get to know them a little bit because, especially early in the season, everybody's playing everybody. So our private schools will will play anybody. I, I know speaking, I'm in Midland. Uh, so uh, my kids played ball at Midland Christian. And so 
Midland Christian has known we will play anybody, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter. We'll take a game with anybody. In fact, Walker, you'll love this. Uh, they just dropped the football schedule, and 6A Friendship is coming to Midland to play next year. What? Yeah, yeah. 6A Friendship <laughs> coming to play Midland Christian. So, But that's uh, the mentality of almost all of these private schools, right? Yeah. The Aids and the Episcopals and Liberty and St. Pius. They'll play anybody. They want to play those because they know that's going to get them better. And so when it comes to level of talent, here's what I think is the, the public schools are going to be deeper. But when you just line them up one to one, if you took a good 6A program and a good even a Division two or three program from TAPS, they would match up pretty well because you're throwing your number ones at each other and they're probably pretty equal. So the, the talent gap between the public school and the private school is almost, you, you almost can't tell the difference anymore. It's true. No, I was talking to my dad a little bit before this, and he was saying that he thinks like the biggest difference is just that public schools have more to choose from. So they might have like a more a deeper like one through nine, but um, private schools are still going to have those really good players that. Yeah, it's about the it is it's about depth in the bench. So where where a where a private school might have one to two good arms, a six A is going to have three to four. So yeah. when, when if you were to play a series between the two, the public school is probably going to take that. But head to head on a one night matchup, it, it is almost a coin toss for a lot yeah. of these. And again, all the way down in Division <clears> three, <throat> and I'm telling you, you take a look at a Pasadena First Baptist, which is a Division four or an Ovilla Christian from the last couple of years, which is a division five school, they're not scared of anybody. They would yeah. play anybody. So. Yeah. Yep. No, and I've seen, yeah, Southwest Christian go and play yep. high school and stuff like that. So it's always good to see different, you know, private schools uh, just, I guess, expanding, just trying to get better in whatever way they can. Um, but speaking, I guess, more on private school, private school matchups, uh, playoffs is, coming up in just a few weeks, which is exciting. I'm very excited to um, just get to see some really competitive high stakes games like that. Um, but I want to know what matchups are you looking forward to before playoff starts? Maybe uh, it's going to decide who uh, goes to playoffs or maybe it's just a good rematch from last year. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, like I said, I was watching St. Thomas and, and Lutheran South just before we logged on, not a district matchup, but those are two heavyweights in Houston, yep. uh, which is great. You're in the middle of district here, the most important time of the year. And these two schools say, yeah, let's play each other. We've got an off night. Let's play uh, to, just to keep things going. It's it's outstanding. Um, you've got Liberty and Fort Worth Christian or or, or uh, uh, first pitch was about seven o'clock tonight. So that's a big one uh, in, in division one districts, one and two, they they don't have to start as soon because those districts are smaller. So they play more non-district. They're just now playing into district. Huge matchups coming up next week. The biggest one, well, this week's big one is Bishop Lynch and Prestonwood. Yes. Uh, and then next week you've got Prestonwood and John Paul. That's going to decide everything. They are play, they play a home-and-home -home series uh, it, during a week, which I love that idea. Uh, that means you don't catch the number one pitcher so you you would you would catch the number one, and then if you don't play for a few weeks, you may catch that number one again, and it skews the result. But when you play them in the same week, you've got to throw somebody else, yeah. and so it it really evens things up. And then in in uh, in division uh, district two, I'm sorry, with uh, St. Thomas and um, um, oh goodness, St. Pius X, they play a three game series over a weekend, and they've just done one so far. So. That one is so up in the air. There's there's nothing to really go on yet because nobody's really matched up. Uh, so those are the ones I'm looking forward to. St. Pius uh, and Concordia. So Concordia, nine years in a row at the state tournament. Um, my guess is that they make it again, but it's a tough district. So uh, I'm looking forward to that Concordia-St. Pius series. Uh, I'm looking forward to see how things play out with Southwest Christian as they try to come back into it and play spoiler a little bit, it looked like Liberty was going to run away with that district. They were six and zero, and now they've lost a couple of games, and they're 
you know, Southwest and Midland are just hanging around there in Fort Worth Christian, just hanging around. And so uh, these series this weekend and next weekend are going to be huge. Midland is off this weekend, and then they'll pick it up next weekend. Uh, their schedule was really weird. All of their stuff was on the road, and they're finishing up at home, which is a huge, huge advantage uh, for Midland Christian. So yeah. these teams, it's it's hard. Walker, you know this. Uh, they got to make this bus ride out to Midland and come play, and weird things happen out here. So always, I've had to do that for cheer a couple times, and I'm not the one playing, but it's definitely not fun. The bus ride. <laughs> I will say this: I, I hear that about making the trip, and we're like, yeah, we make it three or four times a year. It stinks. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, well, but those those are the best ones. And let's see, let me make uh, the Woodlands Christian and Kelly. That's another one. Uh, they played Tuesday night, and uh, Kelly was rolling. You know, they right. won the state championship last year. They did. Rank number two, and this is a great story. So, Coach uh, Coach Tyner, when the game was over last year, I went down on the field as they were celebrating to talk to him, and uh, he said, "Man, this is great." He goes, "But we're going to be better next year." Wow. Oh, better than winning the state championship. He's got like, <laughs> a run of about six years coming up. I was like, wow. Watch out, Taps. Um, and they were rolling. And then Tuesday night, the Woodlands Christian goes to Beaumont and wins. Wow. Kelly's Field. And so the return game is, uh, I think it's tomorrow night uh, in the Woodlands. And so you've got Lutheran South lurking just below there, too. So there is huge matchups uh, this week and next week. I got to say one thing is I got to shout out my guys at St. Thomas because I love that school. <clears throat> they made the Sage tournament right last year. Yes. Uh, how did the, how did those boys look over there at St. Thomas? So they look good. They return a lot of folks, uh, especially Dante, uh, yeah. Dante Lewis, uh, who was uh, leading off tonight uh, for him, headed to Kansas State. Yep. So he is a phenomenal talent. Uh, they had three or four other guys back. So – I would expect St. Thomas to be a tough out. They haven't been playing all that well in the last couple of weeks. Right. But, you know, talking to Coach Masiati, he says, you know, we think we're we're about to turn it around and start playing some better baseball, which is just in time for them to start district play. So um there you go. Let's see. Cool. St. Thomas is always going to be a factor. Always. I think I'm going to try to go to the John Paul to um, Preston Wood game that you were mentioning earlier. Um, oh, I got to see... I'm jealous, Katie. That's yeah. going to be a really good one. Yes, I'm excited. I got to see John Paul to play earlier um, this season. And so I'm excited to see how they look against Preston Wood because I've just, of course, heard so much about um, them. They've had a great season. They have. And Kyle Hay, by the way, got win number 100 a few weeks ago. Oh, wow. Uh, he's an outstanding guy. I love Coach Hay at John Paul, too. Uh, always been a great supporter of ours. And that's going to be a, phen a phenomenal matchup. Yeah. Um, I want to know what what storylines do you think there might potentially be as we head into playoffs? Do you see any big storylines that could be coming up? I do. So I'm interested to see a couple of teams, and one of those being Preston Wood. They're, they're unbeaten. Uh, can they continue? How long can that unbeaten streak go? Uh, you've got Temple Christian in the Fort Worth area, mm. who was the uh, Division Four champion last year. Yes, and they're unbeaten. They are eleven zero and one. So, how are they going to navigate through, and will they be able to make it back? Um, I'm my my to use a basketball term when you're filling out your brackets. My brackets in baseball look pretty chalky. You know, they, it's it's pretty much the the heavy favorites. There, there's, you know, there could be some surprises along the way. I've been a little bit surprised by Savio uh, in the Austin area. They're four and zero in district. They're rolling through. Uh, what? It's, what? It's not the strongest district in the state. So once right. they get in the bracket, I think it's going to be a different story. But they've looked good so far. What? What? What level are they in? They're Division Two. Okay. So next year they'll be going up, you know, you've yeah. seen the brackets or you've seen the the release of the realignments. Division one is going to get bulked back up again. And part of that is Savio's going up, Legacy's going up, uh, uh, St. John 23rd's got a lot of them going up. So yeah. it, it's going to look kind of like it did two years ago with four districts in division one. Gotcha. So, 
Yeah, I know they, they're independent for football, so that's why I was curious. Yeah, so they, they so they would play what like Second Baptist and Fort Ben, I'm guessing down there. Yeah, their Kennedy. their district is uh, so Savio is with St. Michael's and Hyde Park and Regents. Gotcha. So, yeah, cool. Um, shout, shout out Layton Revier. Shout out. There you go. Hey, and I've got to mention my buddy. Uh, he would kill me if I didn't. <laughs> Bishop Lynch is also looking pretty good in that district one. Justin McFadden out there. He does a great job. Like going into the season, um, I just I'm not sure what he's got coming back. But <laughs> the thing I know is this: he always gets them to play hard and they'll play well. And if they don't have talent, they're still going to be good because they just play good fundamental baseball, and that's what they're doing, right? Um, so they they're finishing off. They have a game with uh, Preston Wood tomorrow. Uh, they lost Tuesday night 4 0 to Prestonwood. So oh, wow. close. Uh, they kept it close and they feel like they can get them. The game tomorrow uh, is in Dallas at Bishop Lynch. So that's another one to watch, too. And Bishop Lynch uh, is sneaky good as well. Nice. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about baseball is just that anything can happen. You never know. Um, any, any given day, for sure. Yeah. So I know it's it's hard to predict, but if you had to um, predict, who do you kind of think is going to make it to the final four for each division and uh, taps? And then like, who do you think is going to go on and win it all? Yeah. Remember, uh, remember, Brandon, this is the stuff that's going to get clicked. So just yeah. be careful. OK, I know. And this, <laughs> this is the part I hate the most. The, the thing, one of the things that uh, that is so challenging for me every Sunday night is to is the rankings. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'll hear people talk about who does those rankings and how they come up with it. I'm like, it's, it's, it's a middle-aged guy sitting on his <laughs> recliner at his house in Midland, Texas, doing this all together. It's not scientific. It's not mathematic. Uh, it's based on, I mean, I look at everything. I look at results. Obviously I talk to coaches, I get input from them. Uh, but at the end of the day, rankings are, are just kind of a conversation piece. Um, and I'm going to say this about who I think is going to make the tournament and somebody's going to, somebody's going to get onto me, I'm sure. <laughs> but here's, here's what I think. Um, and it mostly lines up with what I predicted before the season. So when we do our pro, when we do our, uh, our online magazine, that's one of the things we do as part of the magazine is we do, in my case, it would be a division one outlook, a division two outlook. And I predict the four teams that I think will be there. So Without further ado, here we go. Division one, I've got Preston Wood, uh, St. Pius, okay. Jump Ball Two, and Concordia. Ooh. And that's where Justin McFadden is going to get me, Bishop, my buddy at Bishop Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Division two, I've got Liberty. Okay. I've got Kelly. Okay. I've got Lutheran South. Hey. And here's where y'all are going to get me. I've got Midland Christian. Oh, well, of course you do. It's going to, here's what it's going to come down to this. Here's what it's, and I tell you, when, when you look at the bracket, <laughs> um, when I look at my bracket right down there, right, 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 it's Southwest Christian versus Midland Christian. <laughs> and I tell you, I sat there for about 10 minutes yesterday, not filling anything out. Because I have no idea how that's going to go, right? Well, I have a, I have an idea how it's going to go, but let me let me tell you this: if it's a healthy Jackson Burns pitching in that playoff game, it's going to be tough. But the healthy Jackson Burns is going to be pitching against AJ Velarde, who has absolutely mowed down everybody for two mm -hmm. years now. Uh, last year he was just a machine, and he's he's been the same way this year. He pitched. He pitched six and a two thirds shutout last week. Uh, ended up winning the game. He pitched eight innings. So he's a workhorse. It's going to be a. If that game materializes, Katie, go to that baseball game. Okay. Whatever it is, okay. somewhere in the Abilene area, you've got to be there. Uh, because it could just as easily be Southwest Christian. Yeah. Honestly. Well, okay. It will, it will be, three. but you know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, Division Three. I've got Trinity out of Lubbock. They're oh yeah, really good in. Uh, mm. They've been in the state tournament. Had a coaching change, oh. uh, but that hasn't hasn't slowed them down at all. 
Uh, cool. They're sitting at the top of that district. So I've got Trinity, I've got Brook Hill, uh, Brentwood out of Austin, and defending champion Cypress Christian ah. uh, out of the, the bottom part of that bracket. Uh, Division four, Temple Christian, defending mm. champion. I've got them headed back. Uh, uh, I've got Lubbock Christian headed back. Ah, there you go. So interesting. They're, you know, that that district is kind of tough too, but if they mm. emerge and get in the bracket, the way their bracket lines up, I think they'll get there. Gotcha. Uh, I've got Brazos Christian. Uh, They've been doing pretty good. Pasadena. I know that. That's yeah, they're, they're, they they look they look really good. Yeah. Uh, they they're putting it all together. Coach Tim Powers down there doing a good job. Uh so Brazos and then Pasadena. And my heavy heavy favorite there to win it would be Pasadena. Gotcha. Um Division 5, I've got Christian Life Prep uh out of the DFW area. They were ah. at the state tournament last year. Gotcha. Return a lot of uh a lot of their talent. I think Ovilla Christian is going to make it back. They lost one of the best players in the state last year in Wesley Bryant. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, I think they'll make it back. Uh, I like Sacred Heart out of Hallettsville to get back. And then here's my dark horse, maybe uh, Bracken Christian. Uh, oh, there. yeah. Um, so that that's my taps picks right there. Dude. Uh, so, okay. so that's your final four. So I can do the graphics later because I feel like I'm going to do some. Who do, you, okay. who, who, who do you who do you have one in it, man? Who do you have one in it? Oh, why do you push me like this wall? Oh, would you want to do an update up? Do you want to wait? No, uh, okay. We might as well, right? I mean, this is this is for the fans. This is for fun, right? This is for the fans. This is true. And and we have no idea. Because no. here's what I do. I look at this and I go, but I'm gonna hurt my my friend Coach Beam's <laughs> feeling. I'm gonna hurt Coach Hay. I really like Coach Hay and Coach McFadden. And they're gonna, you know, Coach McFadden's gonna get on me no matter what, but it's all in good fun. So here we go. I yeah. think Preston Wood wins Division One. Wow! I just think okay. they have too much talent. Who do you have them facing in the state championship? Also, so I think they will face Concordia. Okay. Uh, and man, Concordia is such a good story. Uh, three years ago, their coach died over the Christmas break, uh, and 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 Royce Kennedy took over. He had been at the program, and they they had this man. They were looking really good, and they made it to the final game. Coach Lynch's jersey hanging in the dugout. It was this great story, great emotional story. And you felt for these guys and they got to the final game and they lost and they've gotten there again. And they, they just, they lose. And man, I, I got coach Lynch one night. Uh, this was probably two years ago, or maybe it was last year. I lose track of time. And I'm on the field with him right after they lost. And he's just shaking his head. He goes, I just can't win that last one. And man, I was just heartbroken for him. He's such a good guy, and that's a great program. So, uh, but uh, man, Preston Wood is just so talented. Now, Concordia is very talented as well. They've got the best catcher in the state in Nolan Traeger. Mm, yeah, and they've got Owen Collins on the mound. They've got a couple of Texas A and M commits playing for them. So they're tough too. That's going to be a great, uh, Whoa. great final four. Uh, Division two. I think this is probably the year that Liberty pulls it back off. Ah. Uh, I like their talent. I like Billy Jordan. I like what he does. Um, it's so, so hard to repeat. Uh, and that's what I think might get Kelly. Although Lutheran South, like I said earlier, looks, man, they look tough too. So uh, Division Three, I think Cypress does the repeat there. Wow. Uh, Division Four. I think Pasadena probably unseats Temple there. Uh, and in Division 5, I don't really have a pick. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. Like, who would I pick out of those four? It's just such a wild card. Right. Uh, I think, you know, Ovilla could repeat. Uh, you know, Greg Hayes does a great job there, but Sacred Heart has experience. Christian Life Prep was there last year, lost the semifinal game, but they had the experience, and so I like that. Uh, and they've got a good program. So, um, man, if you forced me to pick. Yeah, I'm forcing you. Ovilla. There you go. Yeah, we, since since doing these episodes with you, you've always been talking about Ovilla and how they've kind of grown into being a really good baseball force in the state so far. So Yeah, and they, you know, there's another uh, example of an ex-major leaguer. His name is Buddy Groom, who mm. is their pitching coach. He pitched for the Detroit Tigers for several years. 
And so they've got, they're just coached really, really well. Um, so you didn't ask for this, but I'll give it to you for free. Perfect. Uh, SDC. Yeah. Uh, I think, it, I think mm-hmm. Episcopal is going to win the 4A tournament. Okay. Uh, usually it comes down to them and Kincaid, but this year yeah. the surprise team is St. John school. So the Maver- yeah, Mavericks are, 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 uh, they've been, they, they played some top competition in Houston. They're winning one Oh and two Oh, or they're losing one Oh two Oh. So they're right there with the big dogs. So that's who I expect that to be the last two. Gotcha. And then I'll just say this in three, a Fort Worth country day. Mm. If they don't win that tournament, I should probably turn in my baseball card. Uh, they are, they are far and away the best team in 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 the three A conference. Right. I don't think there's anybody even really that close. Now, again, any tournament, anything can happen. You never know. But Fort Worth Country Day would be my pick in three A. Gotcha. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a question. Circling back to um, Division One, you have Preston Wood winning it all, um, which makes perfect sense given their record and their great season. Um, but we saw them lose in regional, uh, the regional round of the playoffs last year, I believe. Uh, what one do you zero. Think? Yeah, one zero. zero. Yeah, yeah. What do you think um, has changed in their team or what pieces have they added um, in order for them to go all the way this year? Yeah, so the big piece they've added is Lash Henderson, the freshman. Uh, the, that number one kid in the country that we talked about. He's the biggest piece that they've added. But uh, Trent Valade as a sophomore, has, as I mentioned earlier, he's really come a long way too. And and they can put him on the mound behind Mitchell. And that's a, that's a devastating one-two punch when you've got Xavier Mitchell, who sits at the top of the strikeout list in private schools. And he's within the top five, I think, overall, when you lump in the public schools too. So you've got him throwing, and then you've got Valade, or you you could flip flop them. They could throw Valade as the number one, and Mitchell as the number two. So that's what I think has changed. They've got that that big one two punch. And if it comes to a one game playoff, uh, if if man, that's another soapbox that I get onto that coaches do too, especially in Division One. I, I wish they would all play the three game series, uh, but if if Preston Wood has to play a one gamer, then they've got those two arms and they it's it's just going to be hard, I think, for somebody this year. So that's what's changed in my mind. Uh, plus the the year experience they've got. Uh, so I said the best catcher in the state is Nolan Traeger. Uh, Preston Wood's catcher would probably beg to differ about that. Uh, <laughs> his name is A.J. DePaolo. He's going to Vanderbilt next year. So really, those guys are like a one and one A. They are outstanding catchers. Uh, and then, of course, you got Omar Serna, <laughs> who is number one in the country in his class. So wow! Uh, again, just you. speaking to the talent. Uh, a lot in of good catchers. Schools. So yeah, tough job. I had, I had one that lived in my house. They're they're tough guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds like there's a uh, a lot of. A uh, fun playoff action that will be happening, and it's interesting to hear your picks. I'm excited to see how that all pans out. See if there's any, I don't know, dark horses that come in and maybe just do something that we didn't expect. Um, and that will probably happen, Katie. Yeah, it probably will. <laughs> um, and moving away from playoffs a little bit and starting to look into the future of Texas private school baseball. I want to know uh, what seniors right now, I know we've talked about a few, we've talked about um, I think Case and Evans and Omar Serna. I'm not sure if he said he was a junior. Or a junior. A senior. Serna's a junior. A junior. <laughs> yeah, but it can apply to juniors too. What players <laughs> are uh, you looking forward to see playing at the next level? Oh goodness. That's a great question. Um I think I think Hogan Nelson is going to be really good at the next level. And I think Hogan will probably play his way into draft position next year as well. Wow. Uh, he's 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 been on the Rangers underclass team uh for the area code games. He'll probably get he's got another invite this year already. Uh he'll probably be on the area code team somewhere uh as his senior year. So he very likely could be drafted. So I, I think he'll be really good. Um, I think Omar Serna will be really good at the next level too at LSU as a catcher. 
Uh, he's he's a uh, you just take a look at him. I've seen a little bit of him on film, uh, and and you just look at him and go, that's a baseball player. Also, looks like he could be a middle linebacker walker. I mean, he's ah. a very good looking athlete. So, um, and I think Matthew Bowton will be really good too. You know, he's a multi sport athlete who does really well. Uh, and, and this would be true of Brady Janusek too. Uh, you know, he could be all state in three sports. And so I think he'll be good at Oklahoma. So, uh, and then Drake hop that I mentioned earlier, um, mm-hmm. he's, he's just a, I think he's just a sophomore, uh, but you know, a dad who was a major leaguer. So he's grown up around the game. He knows what it takes to be successful at the next level. His dad uh, has modeled that for him really well. So I think that's another one that that you could expect will either be really good at that college level or will be a draftable kid here in a couple of years. Yeah, that's really cool to hear. It's exciting just to see um, how kids in private schools and just like that are basically my age uh, go on to be playing in a professional level. It's really cool to see that. Um, Very much. But talking about, uh, I guess, uh, back to high school, um, which players that are maybe freshmen or maybe even in middle school do you see like coming in and making a really big splash for some of these teams? I know we talked about Lash Henderson um, from yeah. Prestonwood, but are there any other players? Yeah, I can't think of it. So I don't know anything really about middle school uh, baseball or programs, so I can't say. But uh, there are a couple of others that that uh, I would think – well, then I'm going to have my eye on. And one of those is Jalen Walker mm. uh, at Lutheran South. Uh, he's the number seven prospect. Uh, in this is These are perfect game rankings. I should have said that when I'm talking about those rankings, I'm talking about perfect game. But I know there's other organizations like Five Tool that are watching these guys. So Jalen Walker, who's a sophomore, uh, there's a sophomore at Episcopal named Miles Young. Mm. Uh, he's a number five prospect. So uh, he's he's going to be one to watch. Jackson Cotton uh, at St. Pius, headed to Texas A and M. Sorry, I think I mentioned Marcus Cantu. There's uh, Concordia has two. Uh, Connor Jones, who's a junior. Uh, Connor is right now uncommitted, and then Ronan McCraw, a, a sophomore, uh, who is committed to Texas A and M. And I remember watching uh, Ronan last year at the state tournament as they were taken in and out before it, before their semifinal game. And I'm watching that kid thinking that is one of the smoothest shortstops I've ever seen. Things were effortless, the fielding and the throwing. And I thought this kid's going to be special and he's going to be something to watch. So Ronan McCraw uh, is another one. Yeah, no, I'm excited to, I guess, follow all those players um, and just, see what happens in the rest of their high school career and where they end up going to college. That will all be fun to watch, but yeah. That's- and, well, you know, Katie, here's the other thing that we have to throw in there too. We had a couple of those this year. Uh, there was one, uh, a young man that was at Pantigo who would far and away have been one of the best private school players. And he transferred to Mansfield high school. So mm-hmm. you have some of that that happens, you know, talk about the private schools. Everybody says, Oh, you're recruiting these kids. Well, listen, I've seen it the other way where this kid, his name was Trey Craig. He hmm. goes from Tigo to Mansfield. So, it, it, you know, that might happen with some of these kids. You never know. Uh, so yeah. that's the other wild card. That's true. Yeah. So you, you wrapped up, Katie? Yeah, those are all the questions that I had. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add? No, um, I will say this, like always, thank you. Brandon, you know, you're our guy and it was awesome finally to meet you in person. I mean, I guess I met you in person beforehand, but like I actually spent some time to, with you up in Midland. That was awesome to hang out with me, Wes, you all hanging out for a little bit. I loved so, it, man. Loved it. It was always a good time, but Hey, you know, uh, I know you're probably going to go cover the state tournament in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll, you'll I am probably- back on the play by play for the state tournament. So hey. I will be there doing all 15 games. Awesome. So y'all come out and hang. You're not too far away. It's at UT Arlington. Come on over. Watch some state tournament action. Well, Katie will definitely be there. We're sending her there. That's, you know. Awesome, you'll get the, Katie. So she'll be there. I guess this is kind of an announcing to her. So congratulations. You're going. But <laughs> Sweet. I'm glad I get to meet you in person. Then. That's awesome. And then, yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah. And then probably Wes and I will be down there. We'll try to make it a little bit. So we'll come hang out with you. Might actually sit down. We can do an episode in person, recap the games or something afterwards. Probably be a pretty uh, cool thing. I'm so, in. Awesome. All right. 
that's it from us. Uh, thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you always. Make sure to go check out TexasHighSchoolBaseball.com. Uh, it'll be in the link description. Go check out Brandon Brunson on socials, which is, I think it's, I'll have it on the screen, but I think it's just Texas for High School Baseball. For, I forget the at, whatever. Yeah, it's TX High School Baseball. There you go. Boom. Got it. So it's on the screen right now. Go check it out. Uh, thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you, Katie, for leading this. It was awesome to watching you do this. And yeah, that's it from us. See y'all later.